So, Mr. Kennedy, would you like to tell us what part compositions have played in your career? I've done quite a few. I've done about five in my time, uh, year after year, from sort of 2001 onwards. And I finished with Cardiff, and uh, uh, it went well, but I vowed never to be in a competition again. It was so terrifying. So <laughs> is it a rite of passage? Do you feel you have a sort of competition zone as a young singer? I think so. I think it's a very important part of uh, being a young singer because it, 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 it develops you, and it, it's a very quick way of uh, establishing you as a, as, a, as a performing artist in front of a public. Um, and it's a very quick way of getting up the ladder, if, if you do well, particularly. The first one I was in was in the final of the ferry, and I hadn't thought through my repertoire at all. I put down ridiculous choices, uh, Werther and other such things, which really I should never have been singing. I actually put them down because I liked them. I went through my Arias book and thought, oh, that would be nice, and that will sound good in a competition. But I had no idea that actually I shouldn't be singing that repertoire. So I think take advice. Um, think of the rounds as well. I mean, my Cardiff semi-final round was by far the strongest in a repertoire situation. I had a beautiful uh, set of four pieces. And for the final, uh, I'd sort of, I'd hoped to get through, but I didn't expect to get through. And then I found myself in the opera final with something that was pretty good, but I put down Cecily, which as soon as I heard the orchestra the, the, the night before the actual final, I just thought this is such a mistake because it's an enormous score. And of course, it's a different thing completely from um, singing Cecily with the piano. Yeah. So little things like that, you know, really, really attention to detail, attention to repertoire. Um, it makes such a difference and, and, and impresses the judges too. Leaving aside that repertoire issue, what did you learn from competitions that you didn't win? Or did you find a way of making non-winning a positive experience? Yes. It's very important. It's very, very difficult to feel positive sometimes when things are going wrong, if they do go wrong, because it's a public humiliation in many respects. If, if, it, if it's not going so well, because you're, you're feeling you're not really representing yourself or uh, as you want to be represented. Um, a lot of it, apart from programming, is, is, is thinking through the actual the, the pacing of the, of, of the repertoire as well. So, you know, you want to... It really is as simple as you want something funny, you want something sad, you want something fast, you want something slow. You want contrast, you want maximum contrast to give different aspects of your personality throughout Absolutely. that performance. And um, competitions inevitably help your career because they, they get you seen by a lot of people. In fact, uh, the conductor Nozeda was watching the semi-final of my Cardiff and I got a job five years later as a result of that. So it, it, you never quite know where these things are going to come from. Well, the moral of that story is very much, don't think it's all about instant gratification. Exactly. exactly. You just never know how it's to slow burn and, and, and the point is that every competition you do well at is another lion brand mark, <laughs> wherever it is. You know, it, it gives you something over someone else. Yeah. And it also gives you a huge amount of confidence, hopefully, if, if, if it's been a positive experience, because it, it, you know, that's what performing is. It's going out and, and engaging with people. And on a, on a certainly a don't aspect of things, don't forget that the audience is there. Uh, you know, they're the, the, the one thing missing from your rehearsal will be the audience. Um, and, uh, and, and, and the audience is important because it's, it's an essential part of your performance. Sure is. <laughs> and you have to so use the so audience. Be fed by it. You mean? Exactly, yeah. be fed by the audience. Don't be afraid of the audience. Don't blank the audience. Yeah. And also don't go out and look miserable. Look like you're happy to be there. The point is, you know, you're, you're giving a performance, you're giving yourself. And if, if you were in a job interview, you'd want yourself to come across as a perfectly, hopefully, a pleasant, relaxed sort of person. Chat. Yeah. And uh, there are so many people who come on, scuttle on, or, or sort of feel terribly sort of down, or because their first number is quite sort of depressed and a little bit sort of uh, subdued, you feel like you have to come out quick. Rubbish. Come out with a big <laughs> smile on your face, engage the audience, and similarly with the applause, thank the audience for uh, showing their appreciation. It's basic manners. It is. It's basic manners, and uh, it's incredibly important. And make them feel welcome too. Of course. Invite they, them they, to the party. You know, don't be, a lot of people say, that, you know, don't be afraid of the audience. They want you to do well. Of course they do. <laughs> you know, that's a really important thing. And, and some particularly, you know, you get all these sort of the Wigmore Hall audiences and things, which, which are incredibly sort of seen as, as very highbrow audience. They still want you to do well. They, they still do. want you to, to, to entertain them. And the first thing you can do is by coming on and, and being jolly or, or being pleasant. Or you, you don't need to be over the top, but just, just be a nice person. <laughs> Excellent.